Well, we're here to answer your gaming and game night questions. Tonight, the question comes from Brian at Fryban on X, who asked, Hi, Mo. Have you done an episode on board games that would be good to play remotely by Zoom or some similar app? Well, thanks for the question, Brian. Uh, well, we have talked about playing games online, uh, especially back near the start of the COVID-19 lockdowns. And we did an entire episode on being able to play games on the various online ways to play games like Boitajou and BGA. And there was a third one back then that was very popular, Sorvanti maybe. Um, and we've mentioned quite a few games that are good to play online during various recommendation episodes. We'll be like, oh, you should check out code names and it's good for playing online. We've never actually tackled this as a standalone topic. So here we are tonight and thank you for the topic suggestion. So while the COVID lockdowns are thankfully done for now, at least here, there are still yeah. many reasons you may want to play games remotely. And the first one fits with that COVID lockdown thing. And that's honestly, if you're sick, if you are actually sick, I think people have learned uh, even if it just feels like a common cold, the responsible thing to do is to stay home. Um, don't go out to public play events and find some other way to play or just don't play at all. We're here to give you other ways to play. So hopefully you get to keep gaming. But if you're sick, please stay home. Please get bed rest. Um, this goes for everything, not just gaming nights. I I haven't had to face the situation yet, but I'm I'm regretting or dreading, I think is the proper word, going out to one of our public play events and having to turn someone away because they're sick. Because I'm at that point now where I think it's my responsibility as a host. If someone's sick, I'm going to have to ask them to leave. It's just not socially and, and health, healthfully. I don't know the word here. It's just not responsible. Now, similarly, you may be perfectly healthy, but you might not have anyone local to play with. There may yeah. not be other gamers uh, near you or near enough you. Uh, similarly, uh, as we get into the winter season here in the Northern Hemisphere, at least, uh, we are getting into weather that can prevent people mm -hmm. from traveling some of the distances that they might have been willing to travel in better yeah. weather. Uh, or for those, some of you in the Southern Hemisphere, you may already be dealing with the fires in Australia or whatever may prevent your traveling uh, from occurring uh, even within local areas that you might normally yep. find yourself traveling in. I know in, in Canada, we tend to think of uh, short distances a little differently than other countries. Uh, <laughs> for me, two hours is a normal, easy drive. For people in Britain, that's a day trip. So, uh, yep. you know, it's a little bit different for everybody. But if you aren't able to travel for whatever reason, digital uh, solutions exist that work wonderfully. Uh, or you do have a regular group and because of the weather or other reasons or someone else is sick, your regular group cancels. Uh, if two or three players can't make it. This is especially true for like RPG campaigns where you expect everyone to be there every week or you're playing a legacy game. It's not necessarily as, as big an impact to a board game night, but it could be if you're playing through, you know, a Frost Haven campaign or something. If your regular group has to cancel the in-person event, you can try to shift it online in one way or another. Or if someone's, you know, really sick and they're bedridden or whatever, and they can't actually play, then you could play something else online. Uh, though, as we talked about before in maintaining a game group and forming a game group, you should try to get together in some way. So that is our pro tip here is if you do have a game night and it's a regular game night, one of the worst things that can happen to a game night is if you cancel altogether, especially if it happens more than once, because then it's hard to get going again. As um, a start of our podcast episode tonight felt after we took some time off, um, try to get a game together, right? If if only two out of six people can make it, maybe you go online and you play some codenames.game online and you play some code names with each other. At least get together and play. Now, sometimes when you're canceling, it's because someone is traveling. <laughs> we, we were talking yeah. before about not being able to travel. Well, sometimes people can travel and have to travel. Sometimes they're out of town for work, for vacation, for whatever reason. Now. If you're out on vacation with your wife, I don't recommend this option. But if you're out at a convention for work or, you know, some work trip and you've got a evening to yourself that would normally be your board game night, why not keep it your board game night? Just join with your friends online. Keep that game night going like we were just talking about, even if you're out of town for some other <laughs> reason. But again, if you're out of town with your wife on vacation, don't say I'm going to go play board games with the with the the with the rest of the uh, gang. That probably won't go over well. Though I would I would say significant other. I think we're past the days where the dudes have to hide their gaming from their wives. 
Um, if someone moves away, like like sometimes people go out of town, but then they're out of town forever because they move to another place or or your game group breaks up and everyone goes away to college and gets married or they move away to Toronto for school or whatever that happens to be that your people you enjoy playing games with are no longer physically located in the same place. Um, in that case, remote gaming is perfect way to keep the group together. Now, we've seen this for years with RPG groups and even play by mail before that. But it's getting possible to do that with any type of gaming nowadays, including board games and card games. And there's so many ways to play games online without people having to be together at the table. So if someone's moved away, it's a great way to keep the group together. Now, similarly, if your group hasn't been together for a long time, maybe you've got your own current group, but there's an old group that, you know, you fondly reminisce that have all spread their wings and gone elsewhere. There's now ways to get that group back together, even if you're spread across the globe. So long as you can make the time zones work, the physical distance isn't the same problem it once was now that we have these online tools. Now, another one is just accessibility. It is a lot easier and you're going to have access to a lot more games by being able to play online than you are with your own personal board game collection. Not everyone runs a board game podcast and has collections with hundreds of games. It is like, I don't have the latest copy of Ark Nova, but I can go online right now and Sean and me and Dee can play a game of Ark Nova through various different tools, which is a fantastic way um, to be able to afford a hobby that I've got to say is getting pricier and pricier and less accessible year after year. So online gaming can actually make it so that you can play games you never would have been able to play in the first place. Absolutely. Well, now that we've listed a few reasons you may want to play online, it's time to get some game recommendations for playing online. So the first one I'm going to recommend, I've already mentioned a couple times, just because it's such a perfect tool, is that someone in your group get a board game arena account now you can just go to board game arena and play for free and that works well but since asmodee took it over the the paywall is becoming more present it's becoming a more solid obstacle to be fair the cost is so small it's probably cheaper than buying pretty much any one board game for the year so put aside your budget and go i'm going to buy one last game so that I can subscribe to Board Game Arena because all you need is one person with a paid account to invite anyone with a free account to play that game, any game. Sorry, not that game, any game. Plus, paid accounts get access to early betas and get to check out other stuff. You get, you know, fancy badges that show you're paid and all the usual stuff for paying a premium for an online service. Board Game Arena is fantastic. It's low cost, great implementations of games. They're legal. It's not someone who's hacked together something. It's actual licensed versions of the games. And honestly, one of my favorite things is it is easy to use. It is point and click in a browser. And now for the low, low price, and we're not selling them. We, are, we, are, we don't make any money from Asmodee. No, no, we are not affiliates. It really is a ridiculously low price of $48 Canadian a year. Yeah, one you game. get access to all the games. You and someone else can play from the same location. Your IP is not blocked and flagged as cheating. So if you if you and your significant other both want to play from home, you can do that with a pay, with one of you having a paid account. But also, if you don't want to have to pay for Zoom because we all know all those free Zoom uh, things have gone away and we can't all, you know, borrow the 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 video from our uh, our work well, for that $48, you get a online chat and video chat right built in to Board Game Arena uh, right there for you, as well as scratch pads. Uh, these are all publisher authorized, often designer assisted implementations mm -hmm. uh, in, in a number of cases. The, the the digital designer has gone to the board game designer and discussed ways to make something better or improve things or make something more visible. So in some cases, the digital uh, is not better, but uh, improved yeah. for its format compared to the real physical version. Honestly, I'm going to jump back to our reasons to play online and digital. Some games are better that way. Games with a lot of trackers and tokens and various scores to track and will actually play better digitally because you don't have all that fiddliness of managing things. Um, Deanna in the chat room has already called out Tapestry as one of those games. So I still I prefer physical I, because there's a spatial aspect of that game. I still prefer physical. 
But honestly, there are board game arena adaptations that make the games more fun. But again, as Mo was saying, and specifically Arc Nova and Wingspan and other great modern current board games are yeah. available there. There are something like a thousand different games of Arc Nova going on right now <laughs> on board yeah. game arena. Um they are they are not just you know playing check and chess and checkers and and get yes. your your grandmother's games from twenty years ago. They have the new hotness on there, and there's a ton of games. Plus, they have the old stuff too. <laughs> like if you want to play, I, I don't know if they have Racco, but like you can play most traditional card games on there. There's a chess implementation; it's all there. All right, enough about BGA. Um, as movie, it'd be great if there you know was a check <laughs> in the mail if you know. And give the code bellhop. Everyone gets 10% off for their membership. That'd be fantastic. But we don't have that. Um, next, though, is, is similar. It's digital versions of the games. And, and by this, what I mean is you buy a copy of a specific game. You're not going to a web page. It's not web based. You're, you're just you're going out and you're going, I'm going to buy uh, Ticket to Ride or I'm going to buy Gloomhaven, but I'm going to buy the digital version. Now, this is generally going to cost you more than a BGA subscription, right? 40 bucks a month versus... Um, well, you can, they no, kind of go on sale. 48 bucks a year, not a month, a year, $40 sorry, sorry. a year Canadian. Yes. For $40 a year versus, um, I'd think terraforming Mars is in that thing, but you don't get all the downloadable content. So the thing is though, these tend to be more polished, more impressive, better sound, better, better interface and, and well done, fully polished video game versions of board games. Now, personal favorites that I played that I think are extremely well implemented are Ticket to Ride, Small World 2, which is oddly named. It's There is no Small World 2 board game, but Small World 2 is Small World 1. It's just they launched a, a digital version and it wasn't great, and they totally revamped it and called it Small World 2. And um, I'm going to call it the Terraforming Mars one, though I will say I'd still rather play in person. Now, I hear everyone rave about the digital version of Through the Ages as it being one of the best. And then there's also games that you can play um, that, that gives you a way to play these games. And I know our, our entire topic tonight is gaming with others remotely, but a lot of these also offer solo versions of games that may not have had solo versions on their own. Like I am currently playing through Space Hulk Tactics, which is a fantastic implementation of the original board game in digital format. So one of the things that you run into here is a lot of these don't have the same sort of interface so you may still need a zoom or a discord or some other yeah. way to keep that social interaction which is part of what this topic is about tonight it's not just about playing the game but playing the game with other people mm -hmm. uh and and without some of that uh, at least voice or digital or 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 chat method it really can feel like you're just playing against the computer ai and that's not really the point of where we're going tonight yeah. it's about that interaction uh for me one of the top ones is Carcassonne. If you love Carcassonne, the digital versions of Carcassonne, uh, both on Steam and on uh, Xbox is another one I, I have, mm -hmm. are fantastic. And another thing about the cost, the one nice thing about these is they tend to go on sale pretty regularly or are offered with free subscriptions. So if you've got your Xbox mm -hmm. Uh, live subscription, or if you are uh, part, if you if you check on the Epic Thursday mornings, you know Epic's weekly free games. I've gotten Carcassonne in in particular, but also uh, Blood Rage and uh, Game of Thrones, the board game. I've all been free mm -hmm. uh, through various different services, as well as looking at things like Humble Bundle, where you can get uh, often you know entire bunches of Asmodee digital yep. games for one low price, uh, which is a fantastic option. Uh, now, one other thing that you can go, though, is sort of doesn't really fit into anywhere specific, and I, and I think here is kind of the best place for it, are the hybrid solutions, where they're part video game and part board game. Uh, things like uh, Taburu, Infinity Table, uh, or Vorpal, uh, the Vorpal um, board systems, where you're using some sort of physical board, whether it's an, an actual board game, the, the, the actual board game and a camera or a, a digitally digital board game that, that sort of interacts itself with online. Uh, there are a few of these options out there, but yet again, you still need other camera and chat and video options available to make those work. 
So just uh, to back up just a little bit, one of the problems that, that I didn't think of until you were talking about these digital versions of games that, that does kind of stink is in general, you all have to have a copy of it. I don't know many of those games like the digital Gloomhaven. Everyone's got to have a copy of digital Gloomhaven. Digital Terraforming Mars, everyone has to have a copy of digital Terraforming Mars. I don't know if there's any, even even like Sean's calling out the carcass on the Xbox. I don't think you can host games unless everyone owns the game. So that is a big drawback compared to, say, Board Game Arena. Now, the Tebaru tables in that, and this is something I don't know because I haven't done the, the research. Is there a way to play someone else on them? So, like, if I had a Tebaru and you had a Tebaru, we'd have the physical game in front of us. But when I move a piece, it would show up on your board, too. So my understanding of the Tebaru is that you only actually need one and someone else can, can sort of dial in, like showing my age there, remotely yeah. <laughs> to the game. Uh, but that one is one that I'm still not 100 percent sure on. And it's got a bunch of different features like it's also it's not just for remote play. It's also for enhanced uh, in-person play. The board right. does extra things for you. Uh, mm -hmm. So whereas Vorpal board is, in particular is specifically for one person has the game and someone else dials in and gets to see and partake okay. without without having the physical uh, game. I don't remember. I don't know the, the brand they have, but uh, everybody's place, one of the local uh, gaming cafes, has a sit down. It looks like the old sit down Pac-Man tables, and it's specifically to play board games on. And they paid for a bunch of licenses for different board games. But that's you just sit there and play, which is just you don't. It, basically, it's a storage solution, right? It's instead of having a thousand games, you have this one box that has a thousand games in it. Now, I don't again, I don't know if you can connect with someone else with one of those. So I don't know if it's a good recommendation for tonight's topic. Now, one other thing we've seen is publishers putting out web versions of their games. So it's kind of like a board game arena implementation, but it's owned and operated and controlled by the publisher. Um, the first big game I saw do this, and I'm, I'm sure companies have been doing this for years, but just didn't make a big splash, was Codenames. Which right now, while you're watching the show, you can go play Codenames. You go to codenames.game and you can just start playing Codenames. You can play solo. You can have your friends join. You get, a, you know, the usual room code in the corner and they can join on any device because it's web based. Um, there's now Telestrations. The op released a Telestrations version, which is supposed to be fantastic. I haven't tried that one myself. Um, my kids are going to shout out Gardic Phone, which is a digital version of Telestrations. It's a, it's a version of Eat Poop You Cat. Um, and then I will admit, I, I don't know how strongly I want to recommend these because I don't know how legal they are. But you can find non-official versions of games like Dominion. I have played many games of Dominion in my browser. Um, you can play um, a game that's going to come up when we start talking about physical games. You can play Railroad Inc. online at multiple times, can't stop. Um, so, and then there's, I don't know, probably a million versions of Scrabble and, and Boggle out there if you want to play those online. Uh, the best thing here, though, is the fact that these are browser-based and free. So there's no app, there's nothing to download, no one needs anything special. Apple and Mac and people on, I could play on my Fire TV with the internet browser on some of these games. Yeah, and now after that, we get to uh, sort of the, the, the mixed bag options. Uh, things like uh, Tabletopia, Tabletop Simulator, where there's good and bad. Uh, some of these yeah. have intera uh, integrated chat systems of some form or other, but the interfaces are not always super polished. Yeah. Um, something like Tabletopia, where it's a little more uniform, is uh, is its own thing. But then you move over to Tabletop Simulator, and it's all a Wild West. Uh, however yeah. it's been designed by whoever's designed it, that's what it looks like. There is no overarching sort of real concept other than the fact that there's a table that could be flipped at some point, which is kind of horrific concept because uh, it's not that hard to do. Uh, so this where you this is somewhere you can find just about everything. If you want to play yeah. tic-tac-toe, if you want to play Warhammer 40k miniature battles, they're out there. Uh, a lot of them are unlicensed, but there are also a lot of real licensed systems. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the big things you get into is the differences in whether it's coded or not. Some of them yeah, will do scripted. things for you, like a BG, like a board game arena implementation where you just, you know, click on the, the deck of cards and it deals them out to you. 
whereas some of them are completely physical and you are playing it just as if you had the physical game in front of you, mm -hmm. but with a mouse, which I think many people can imagine isn't always the most easily managed system. Uh, your your mouse doesn't quite work as nicely as your fingers and hands do uh, for most people. Uh, although for some people, it could actually be an advantage. It could actually be better than whatever their uh, normal mobility allows. So it's very much up to you. Uh, and it's very much sort of buyer beware. Try it and see what you like. But don't set up a family game night on Tabletop Simulator without everyone being a little yes. familiar. That would be a serious shock. Now, what Tabletopia Tabletop Simulator do offer where you don't need a mouse is they are fully VR integrated. So if you want to do the super future cyberpunk thing and sit down at a virtual table and use your hands to manipulate a digital version of a board game, it can be done there. I don't know how well it works. I don't own that technology. I've never tried it. But for those of you with your Oculus Rifts or um, I'm pretty sure you can even get it on PlayStation with the PlayStation VR. You could literally sit there and play Catan as if you were sitting at a table, including picking up and rolling the dice and all those things. Uh, the big thing I find, though, when I'm using these is, is there are usually multiple versions of games and you want to try to find the one that's the most scripted because that means it's going to do a lot of the work for you. Cause like Sean said, otherwise like there's when you say, draw your hand, well, if it's not scripted and I have to like click draw five times to draw my hand of five cards. And then, you know, if it's scripted, it'll automatically put it in my hand. It'll sort the cards and group them as well as them moving my pawn on the time track next. Cause that's what you do after you draw and then rolling the custom dice to figure out what resources we get to pick for before I get to do anything. Whereas the other version you got to do that. I'm like, okay, I click five times. I'm not going to bother sorting my hand because it takes too long. Okay. Did someone remember to move the mirror on tracker? Like it's just like playing in person. Like, it seems weird to complain about these things that we have no problem doing physically, but for some reason, once you put it digitally, it's really annoying. Now, as far as digital gaming goes, I do want to call out one other hybrid here. Um, I'm going to call it a hybrid. It's technically a video game series. And that is the Jackbox games. Um, starting with the original trivia game, which, I got to admit, is a ton of fun. Moving on to the Jackbox Party Packs, which I think number 10 or 11 just recently came out. Now, these are not official digital versions of specific tabletop games, but most of the games in the Jackbox series are very much tabletop style games. They're word games and puzzle games and, and you're, there's dice games and all kinds of all kinds of different drawing games. They are based on the types of games we tend to play at the table. And I've got to say, Jackbox Nights exploded um, during the COVID lockdowns. Like, for almost every streamer I know set up a Jackbox party night. And they are so great for so many different people. Uh, there's just such a great variety of games, and it's all super accessible. And like the web-based games, it just they work on everything. You just need the room code to log in, and you get to join the game. So you need a, your phone, you got a computer, you got a laptop, you got a Mac, you got... Uh, you're running Linux, you can sit there and join in on a Jackbox game. So I strongly recommend those. Um, that's one of those things, if we had more time, I'd probably host a Jackbox night every whatever, Thursday night at 6 p.m. or something. I would love to do that, just there's not enough time in the day. Now, while Jackbox games are fantastic, they are a little bit of a socially distanced thing. They don't have any form of chat or interaction between the players other than within the uh, mechanics of the game. Uh, yeah. So having a Discord chat room or Zoom window yeah. or something else out there is definitely advisable. Uh, I used to do a Friday night Jackbox game with uh, one of the Discord servers I was on. And it was great because everyone just hopped into a Discord room and then joined the and then joined from the room code there. Uh, additionally, depending on how many you how many people there are, you want to sort of uh, learn the Jackbox games because certain games play unlimited people, certain mm -hmm. games have player counts, some some drag on with too many players. And again, as most said, there's like 10 different party packs now. There's a lot of games to know. Uh, and so do your research and figure out which games are going to work best for your situation, your number of players and, and, and such. Uh, because there is a wide range of options available. All right. Well, these digital games are great. That's not always what people want, right? Well, they can be great, fantastic, sometimes even better than the physical implementations. 
sometimes you want that tactile feel um, for many of us dice in particular. If a game has dice, I want to touch and roll those dice. Um, and you want that chatter and banter that you don't always get with sites like Board Game Arena. Like, yes, it has chat. Yes, it has video. But like like Sean just said, the Jackbox doesn't. You need to use some kind of outside source to get that social feeling going on at time. And now I think. Like, I, I can't read their mind, but I'm assuming Brian, based on how the question was worded, is looking for tabletop games that play, play great at the table, but work remotely. Um, the main tool we're going to be looking at here is something like Discord or Zoom, something where you have video and audio, as well as a physical game board. So, And what was it? I can't remember the other one we used to always use that, that was really good until we switched to Zoom. What was that? Oh, um, yeah, I don't even remember. Yeah, see, drawing a blank. We we <laughs> had that Tubi or something, but that's the TV thing. I don't even remember what it was called. It's what we used to record the show on. But anyway, what, I, I, what do they call them nowadays? I don't even know. Are they digital conference rooms? Like, I don't I even mean, know what you call that just software. Calls it, I mean, Zooming, Zooming has sort of become the Kleenex. Yeah, Zoom's kind of <laughs> become the Kleenex, right? That's where the name of the episode comes from, right? Because Zoom's kind of the Kleenex of uh, digital chat room or video and audio chat room. Yeah, for, for better or worse, they became the de facto standard at the beginning of the pandemic and then ran into problems and, and you know, and angered some people and kind of have fallen out of favor uh, in the post-pandemic yes. world. But now yeah, they, we guess it's possible to really play anything over Zoom. We've seen some pretty impressive camera rigs and setups showing off how people have completed an entire Gloomhaven campaign with remote three remote players. Uh, but that's not what we're going to showcase tonight. We're going with games that are easy to play over Zoom, uh, either out of the box or with very minor modifications. Yeah, here we're, we're not looking like, yes, I'm, I'm sure someone has figured out a good way to play Power Grid over Zoom. Um, and I'm sure someone else has, has set up whatever. I, I can't even think off the top of my head games that wouldn't work very well over Zoom. I'm sure it can be done. But what we're looking at is games that basically play the same at the table as they do over Zoom. Right. And now, as usual, this list is in no particular order. All right. The other thing we're going to do tonight is I'm going to kind of more stick to genres. Like, we're going to call it some specific games. But in, in there, there's whole classifications of games that just work well from this. And I'm going to start. I think we both agree one of the best kinds of tabletop games to play online uh, over Zoom through a chat room with with a chat. Um, and possibly stream it is a a role playing game, a a pen and paper role playing game. Um, you may even go to the, so far as to use a virtual tabletop. People have been playing role playing games online for years, going back to the first times we were able to connect digitally. I don't know how many people know this fact, but I met Deanna in a on a BBS called Spine of the World in the Warhammer Fantasy role play door that I was running where I was going to run the enemy within campaign through a BBS through text. Um, I, I, I had to adore her because she's the only one that actually showed up to play. So that's actually how I met Deanna back in the day. She was on a C64 and I was on my dad's Amiga. So people have been playing RPGs online for years. And one of the good things about that is over all those years of playing online, they have kind of perfected it. Like the, the, the RPGs work really well online. And I actually now know a number of people who had physical groups who now play online because they like the tools that are available and the fact they don't have to travel. They don't have to put on pants, right? Like there, there are some advantages to playing digitally um, that the, the you don't get having to play in person. Yeah. And there are so many tools now and we've done whole shows about some of the digital mapping solutions and other uh, things that are out there, digital ma maps and, and tokens, music, uh, sound effects, uh, think spaces like Roll20, or even just a simple Discord room work fantastic for, uh, for things. You know, with Discord, there are so many bots out there. If you want to play mm -hmm. a specific game that has specific dice requirements, there is a Discord bot out there for you. I have run into some really obscure ones that it'll do all sorts of fancy dice pools and, and you know, extra rolls when, you know, when you, when you max out and you, you roll extra dice, it does it all for you. 
it's all there. So if you want to just have a chat room, maybe a little bit of voice or video chat as well, Discord has all of that right there for RPG. Or if you want to go to that next level and you want to go to, uh, you know, having a virtual tabletop where you can move miniatures around and, and have mm-hmm. maps, uh, then you've got so many options out there with Roll20 uh, or any of the the other similar options that whose names I really should have written down and didn't. <laughs> now as for what game to play i honestly that's going to be based on your group more than anything i your your best best play the game you want to play right um what you do have to watch for though is what requirements are in that game um physically right so games that require tokens uh that the people pass out you're going to need some way to represent that that may not like i'm not saying it's a bad choice digitally but be aware that you're going to need some way to track your bennies if you're playing savage worlds if you're playing a game that uses maps and minis you're probably going to want to invest in one of the better virtual tabletops, something where you can track your maps and minis. And trust me, you're going to want one that does fog of war and does the calculations and line of sight for everything. It's just going to make it easier for you. Now, if you don't have that rule restriction, like th- that you're not using minis, then you might just need basic chat, right? Like a, a, a Zoom meeting or whatever to be able to play. Now, you're probably going to want some kind of online dice roller, depending on how much you trust your players. And um, personally, I find the rule light game that works the best for me so far that I've seen is powered by the Apocalypse games. Just because it's 2D6, everyone's got 2D6, the basic system, you're rolling higher than seven, everyone kind of gets it, doesn't require maps and minis and tokens and all that special stuff. Though, of course, various PBTA games might. Like, personally, if I was going to run a campaign online right now, I would probably go with Worldwide Wrestling from Nathan Paoletta. So there are a ton of options out there. From uh, Albert Rodeo, uh, Table Plop, and other free options out to other paid ones, which are either online or you can even host yourself. Uh, I yep. know our uh, friend of the show, Sean, from, uh, um, wow, that they, they haven't been off the air for that long. <laughs> Gaming and BS. Gaming and BS. Uh, went through, did a few episodes of how to set up his own personal online uh, tabletop that he purchased uh, that had licenses available to it. Now, what you're going to do, again, depends on that. If you want to roll, if you want to play D&D, you're probably going to want Roll20. Although, you know, there are, you know, things like Albert Rodeo, which while free, still have a significant amount of functionality, but may not have all of the officially licensed rule books and things which you mm-hmm. can get from something like Roll20. Now, if you are looking for something simpler, like a PBTA game, I while I am a backer of this, I did put money into it, uh, playroll.com is kind of ro- risen up as one of the premier PBTA or Forged in the Dark role-playing virtual tabletops, and they have all of the licenses for all, a lot of those major games out there, like... Uh, um masks and and all of the uh you know associated games from from those publishers again as licensed games with the rule books with the rule sets with pre-made character sheets all set and ready to go in there you don't have to worry about designing your own custom character sheets all right moving away from rpgs that's the only rpgs we're going to call out tonight instead of specific ones we are going to go to the first board game on our list a party game one we are going to review later tonight. So those of you here live, you'll get to hear that later and listen to the podcast. Uh, for those of you who are catching just this segment on YouTube, be sure to find the reviewer in the full episode. Monstrosity is the game. And the reason I call this one out is I watched a live stream of, I don't know how many people it was. I'm going to, it was at least 30 people, maybe 50 people play a game of this all at once. Um, the person that owns the game does all the monster describing and everyone else draws on whatever they have on hand. Um, someone was using MS Paint. Someone used a tablet. Someone grabbed pen and paper. Um, you're all going to draw. You're going to hold it up. Everyone's going to laugh. No, you're not doing the full game. No, you're not doing the full scoring. But you are getting the essence of that game out there, which is one person describing a monster and everyone else trying to draw it based on that. Now, the benefit here is if more than one person owns the game, they can take turns describing monsters. Um, or I guess the person who owns it could always hold a monster card up to the camera and everyone else closes their eyes or something like that. That gets a bit messy. And another recommendation I saw online was the person who's going to describe the monster just like goes and finds a picture of a monster. You know, they Google monster with 60 eyes and whatever comes up, that's what they describe. That way you don't even need the physical copy of the game there. 
I think Monstrosity is a great game to play online. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, one of the gr- other great ones is code names. Someone lays out the cards, points a camera at the setup, and you're good to go. The only tricky part is, of course, the clue card that the team leaders use. Now, here you probably need some trust as someone holds up the card to the camera and both leaders you take a pic or a screenshot. Another option, of course, is to go to Codenames Online and use the clue cards there, but don't actually play there. Uh, you can still play physically. Uh, another option, of course, is using a side channel like a messaging app or something directly between the two people who need to, to share those, that information and, uh, and and share it there so that everyone on cam can't see it. But uh, yeah, you can you can do it with a camera and it's almost exactly the same as playing it on yeah. the web version. Yeah, Discord, just make a separate channel, right? Like the team leaders and people leave the two people who are the leaders for the next round. Join that room. Everyone make sure everyone else is out. You can see who's in the room. Uh, now I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat again by going back to a group of games, uh, type of games, and that is de- deck construction games, deck construction dueling card games. And by decks construction, I mean you build your deck before you sit down and play. Uh, games like Magic: The Gathering that'd probably be the big one to call out. Now I, this is not deck builders. You're not Star Realms doesn't work so well. The whole central market thing doesn't work when people are in different locations. Um, but games where people make their deck ahead of time and then just play with their own cards during the game. Um, There's, of course, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, and, of course, now Disney Lorcana that fits in this. Um, Actually, a ton more games fit in this. Most of the collectible card games and trading card games, living card games, all work for this. Now, of course, everyone has to have their own deck, but you don't need to. uh, You can play digitally as long as you don't have to share cards. You just have to watch anything that has players take cards from opponents. I realize that's something that's pretty, I think it's pretty much out of magic now, but I know some card games are like, you know, take this card, put it on top of your opponent's deck. Those aren't going to work so well unless your opponent happens to have copies of the cards as well. Um, again, Magic's probably the main recommendation here. It's still good after all these years. Um, yes, you could go to Mad- Magic the Gathering Arena and play that way. But again, I think you want that Zoom. You want that Discord. You want that communication. You want to be able to look your opponents in the eyes when you play that 10 10 trample. Fair enough. Well, another uh, sort of genre of games are Trivial Pursuit style games. Now, If everyone happens to have a copy of Trivial Pursuit, which isn't all that unlikely, you can just sit down and one person has the board, then everyone has their own sets of cards. The odds that you're actually going to ask to pull the same cards from two sets of Trivial Pursuit, assuming you even all have the same versions, are slim and none. But there are also other versions. And what that's where we get to Outsmarted, a game that we have reviewed here on the show. And this one is Trivial Pursuit Designed. For, to allow for remote play. Yeah. Now, even when playing at the same table, it's best if everyone pulls out their phone and <laughs> plays that way. Uh, now, the game does provide a virtual board, so anyone from anywhere in the world who's playing and logged in on that game can move their own piece, but we found some difficulties with that, so it's still better if you look at the camera, at the big board set up, at the main, whoever's you know got the actual physical board, and say, hey, can you move me? out of that blue square off to the left because trying to move on the digital board was somewhat problematic. Now I got to say, I think a really fun variant of this would be for everyone to bring a different version of trivial pursuit to the table. <laughs> so one person answer asking questions is going to be different than another player asking questions. Uh, next, another group of games, roll and rights. I am going to call out specifically dice kingdoms of Valeria as one of our personal favorites. Um, For most roll and writes, all the players really need is to print off a copy of the the board, the the writing part. And 90% of the roll and writes out there, you can get free PDFs. Um, Dice Kingdoms is one of those. Actually, the PDFs are more readable than the actual ones that come in the game, as we called out in our uh, Dice Kingdoms of Valeria review. Now, yes, it'd be better if everyone has their own set of D6 dice and even better if they're the proper colors. But you can just have one person roll the dice for everyone and point the camera at the dice. Uh, the only fiddly bar- bit with this particular game, Dice Kingdoms of Valeria, is the fact you can claim these statues. There's a market of five of them. So you're going to want a camera set up on them or at least a picture of them. And people are going to have to find some way to track which ones they've claimed. That could be another picture or screenshot, right? People have to realize, just take a screenshot and then you've got, here's the ones that are up in the market right now. Of course, there are plenty of other roll and writes, ones that probably work perfect out of the box. 
I know the um, the pinball secret super skill pinball arcade is a very popular one for people to stream and play along with their audience. So that's another one that would work really well. And of course, there's the basics, right? The There's the Yahtzee works great playing online. Everyone has their own set of dice or again, one person rolls and then everyone has play a game of Yahtzee where one person rolls and you all have to use the same numbers. That's a great Yahtzee variant. That's a little more of a gamer's game. Um, another one that gets a huge shout out by people all the time is the welcome to series basically any of those roller rights that say one to a hundred players work perfect online now while still technically a rolling right we're going to call out railroad inc and all those other single input multiple output games these are the games where everyone is given the same thing at the start of the round and has to do something with it uh with railroad inc it's the results of a dice roll uh, that they have to draw, but there's also a uh, number nine, MM, NMBR nine, which has all the players stacking the same tile or tiny town where everyone has to take the same cube. Now, the issue here is for this to work, everyone kind of needs a copy of the game. Maybe, maybe not with Railroad Inc., but it is an issue with the other ones. Now, one of these games we reviewed pretty recently was Dolce, which would also work again, but you, everyone would need a copy. Next, I'm going to call out the Coded Chronicle series of games from uh, our friends, the Bamboozle Brothers and the Op. Um, I, my biggest recommendation is still the Scooby-Doo Escape from the Haunted Mansion for anyone who's old enough to remember Scooby-Doo and anyone who's young enough to enjoy Scooby-Doo. But if you're not a big Scooby fan, the Goonies Escape with One-Eyed Willie's Rich Stuff is a close second. Um, I've actually seen people play scooby live on stream and it worked fantastically now the person who owns the game is going to need a copy of it like you have to have one person as a game and they're going to end up doing a lot of reading because people are going to say oh go check that out but joining in on zoom or other other virtual chats or or talking online you can have multiple people work on the puzzles um you can even have it so that you know someone plays shaggy and decides what Shaggy's going to do even better if you have multiple copies or if you can get together physically before playing online, you can hand out the books. Can you imagine like meet up at Tim Hortons for a, a coffee, sit down, have a coffee and hand out the seven different Goonies books to seven different people. Then that night you go home and you play online. I think that'd be a fantastic way to play these games. Now I'm going to expand this though, to say really most of the escape room style games would work for this. Well, playing online. Um, I think in particular the murder mystery style games, being better than the 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 escape room style games because most of the escape room style games tend to have you have to manipulate physical components. Well, you can't really do that very well. One person can, but it's not all that interesting for the other players. I'm gonna call out specifically Mysterious Package Company's Ghost in the Machine. I've been tempted to live stream that because we're currently playing through that and it plays like a which way book. It's if you go to room number 108, you open up a book and read 108. I think that one's a great one to have people vote where to go next, right? You put up some kind of voting thing, people put their hands up or whatever. Um, I've also heard and seen people stream Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Um, patron of the show, friend of ours, Jeff, is huge on these games. And I've seen other people run that game on Zoom. All right, well, now on to some honorable mentions. Uh, first up, just one. Now, this seems like a great party game for playing over video chat. Everyone writes down their own thing and then reveals it as normal. The only fiddly bit is getting out the clue word uh, to, ev uh, to everyone. But that's as simple as one player around having to close their eyes or look away. The only reason this is an honorable mention is that none of us have actually gotten to play this great sounding game yet. And there's probably a ton of other social or not social deductions. Sorry, that's next. Uh, spoiler. There's probably a ton of other party games that work well for this. I was looking at my own personal collection of party games and, and I didn't see a lot that would work. Now, Telestrations is another one. But again, you kind of want everyone to have their own copy of the game. But you can put but like you can't. Sorry, Telestrations doesn't work because you can't pass your books. Right. So I'm looking at mine and I'm like some people have recommended trap words and some other party games. Um, but just one in particular seems like a perfect one. Next, though, I do want to call out what I kind of slipped there is uh, social deduction games. Well, we may not love them. Lots of people do. Social deduction games are great for online play. Almost any time, if you search games to play over Zoom, one of the games you're going to see everywhere is some version of Werewolf or Mafia or, or The Resistance or the, all of those games with the hidden trader. Try to figure out who the killer is. 
Um, the, all of those games are hugely popular. The difficulty is, though, is giving people their roles. And this is the reason I didn't put Psycho Babble on the main list. I'm like, Psycho Babble is fantastic. This would play great over Zoom. But how do I do the card thing to figure out who's insane? I couldn't think of a way to do it. It physically at all. You would need there needs to be like a tabletop topia version just to shuffle those cards and give them out to people. So do watch for that. If there's the, you know, handing out of roles with everyone recommending werewolf, I'm sure there has to be an online tool that people are recommending that because I don't quite see how to do it. But anyway, I'm not a huge fan of these types of games. I do like Psycho Babble. Um, Secret Horrible Villain Games, if you know what I mean, are also very popular for online play. All right, well, there you have a list of ways to play games remotely online, including a number of ways to play digitally, as well as some physical games that work well over video chat. Have you been gaming online? What games have you been playing? And what would you recommend Brian check out? Let us know in the comments. Or even better yet, join our Discord at discord.tabletopbellhop.com and share your thoughts there. And maybe, why don't we set up a game?